So you want to become a financially free dividend investor and use the dividends to pay your bills and to be able to live the life that you want and you quite frankly deserve. I know, so did I, and after almost a decade of hard work, lots of wins and lots of losses, I can safely say that as of right now, I've managed to do this for myself. But please stop where you are in investing and building your dividend growth portfolio, and please allow me to explain exactly how to, step by step, build a powerful, simple, yet extremely effective dividend growth portfolio that you can feel is certainly going to get you to where you want to be in the future. If this sounds at all interesting to you so far, please drop a like down below and subscribe to my channel for more investing help. So we are going to need to first go over some of the basics on why I think building a monster dividend growth portfolio is by far best built using ETFs. Now, ETFs offer several advantages, especially to those that are newer to invest. One of the most compelling reasons to choose ETFs over single stock picking is simply diversification. When you pick individual stocks, you are essentially betting all your money on the success of a single company. If that company encounters financial troubles, which a lot of companies do, its stock price is going to plummet, putting your investment at a significant risk. Now, ETFs, on the other hand, provide instant diversification. They bundle together a variety of different stocks. Within a specific category at times, for example, instead of investing into just one tech company, you could instead invest into a tech ETF. That includes multiple tech-related stocks, things like Apple, Microsoft, and Amazon, all in one ETF. This diversification spreads the risk around, reducing the impact of any one company's poor performance. Another significant advantage of ETFs is their lower risk profile. Single stock picking can be highly volatile and unpredictable. Individual company stocks can experience dramatic price fluctuations, and as an investor that's been investing for nearly a decade, I've seen this happen time and time again, even if the stock that you think you're buying into is bulletproof. Factors like company news, industry trends, or economic conditions can take a once perfectly fine single stock and really wreck it overnight. But ETFs are less susceptible to these ups and downs because they represent a broader market or an entire sector at times. This stability can provide peace of mind for a beginner investor who may not have the time or expertise to closely monitor individual stocks. Furthermore, ETFs are known for their simplicity. And unlike investing into single stocks, ETFs can be managed passively. Because let's be real here, we are all too busy to be constantly staying up to date with every single single stock in our portfolio. So now that we know why, I think ETFs is a far superior approach to single stock picking. It's almost time to share with you which ETFs I would include in my monster dividend growth ETF portfolio. But before I reveal these three different names, let's quickly go over what these ETFs need to have in order to make the final cut and get added into this absolute beast of a portfolio we're going to be building. So these ETFs, for one, need to pay dividends and have to have a long history of doing so. This will assure cash flow right from the start, which we can use to then reinvest into more shares of more of these ETFs and get the compounding snowball effect really going from day one. These ETFs are also going to need to have dividend growth. A growing dividend is going to be crucial to not only keep up with inflation and future living expenses, but also you never know what you're going to be doing in the future. But regardless, one thing's for certain, you're most likely going to need more and more cash flow, no matter what comes ahead. These ETFs are also going to need share price appreciation. We need to have an asset that's growing in order to reach massive financial freedom in the future. And lastly, a strong basket of holdings, which is pretty obvious, a low expense ratio, because we also need to keep as many profits in-house as possible. So with that being said, let's go through the breakdown of this absolute beast monster dividend growth ETF portfolio. So this right here is going to be the portfolio breakdown. Very simple, yet very effective. The portfolio is going to be as follow. 33% of the portfolio will be made up of Devo, and we're going to go through all these ETFs here in a second. 33% of it will be made up with ticker symbol VIG and 33% of it will be made up with the SCHD ETF. Now, first off, heading over to Amplify ETFs to look a little bit deeper into Devo. If for those that might not be all that familiar with this ETF, it says, why invest in Devo? Devo has income potential, which is of course, partially what we're looking for, comprised of high quality dividend-oriented stocks, along with a cover call strategy on individual stocks. So the Devo ETF buys a basket of really high quality stocks, which you are going to see here in a second, and then sells cover calls, these individual names, in order to generate quite a bit of income on a monthly basis. And Devo has been able to generate income for investors for quite some time now. The trailing 12 month dividend yield as of right now is 4.83%. So this is going to be the highest starting dividend yield of all the different ETFs we're going to be going through in this bunch. 
Debo pays out right around 14 or 15 cents on a monthly basis, which is a good amount of cash flow, especially if you have a decent amount of shares worth of Devo. And with this ETF and the cash flow income on a consistent basis, an investor will be able to reinvest a lot more cash and buy many, many more shares of Devo or anything else. Now, Devo on the all time chart is actually up 40.41% which isn't all that much growth as far as ETF price, but keep in mind this ETF has only been around for a few years. Now the basket of holdings that Devo has is a small basket, relatively speaking, but also very, very high quality. So right now there's some short-term treasuries in Devo. There's some Visa, United Health Group, Chevron, Procter Gamble, Microsoft, Apple, JP Morgan, McDonald's, the Goldman Sachs, and others. 33 different holdings as of right now. So even though this ETF doesn't have a massive amount of diversification because of the cover call strategy and because of the companies that Devo does have inside the fund, this fund has performed very, very well historically, growing share price slow and steady, but also paying a nice amount of dividends on a monthly basis. Now, one thing about Devo that I don't necessarily love is the fact that it has an expense ratio of 0.55%, and this is likely because of the cover call strategy and the fact that this ETF is a little bit less passive on the management side of things. But with a 0.55%, the dividends are going to definitely make up for the little bit of expense that the CTF has. So in my opinion, it's all worth it. The next one third of this monster dividend growth ETF portfolio is going to be the Schwab US Dividend Equity ETF. Now SCHG is pretty simple. It says the fund's goal is to track as closely as possible before fees and expenses the total return of the Dow Jones US Dividend 100 Index. Now SCHD has had some massive performance over the past 20 or so years, up 174 plus percent, not even including dividends. And although SCHD doesn't have as large of a dividend or starting dividend that Devo has, it still does have a 3.67% trillion 12 month dividend yield, which once again is going to give investors a nice amount of cash flow pretty much right off the bat, which again in theory can be used to reinvest and buy more shares of SCHD or anything else. SCHD does have a massive amount of dividend growth, and it's very obvious right here as you see the quarterly payouts over a long time frame. Say 10 or so years ago, SCHD was paying around 24, 25 cents per share per quarter. Around 10 years later, the same investors, if they were to be holding on those same shares, are getting paid almost three times as much just for holding. Now, SCHD does have a very high quality diversified basket of holdings. Around 100 different stocks, companies like Amgen, AbbVie, Pepsi, and others make up the top 10 holdings. Now, SCHD does have a very fair, cheap expense ratio of just 0.06%, and this is of course because this fund is a little bit more passively managed, but the strategy that SCHD has, and of course the methodology of the underlying index that it tracks, is very high quality, which is why SCHD has performed so well over the past 10 plus years. Now, the last final one-third of this monster dividend growth ETF portfolio that we're building would be the Vanguard Dividend Appreciation ETF, or VIG. Now, this ETF has a very simple product summary. It says seeks to track the performance of the S&P US Dividend Growers Index, passively managed full replication approach. And VIG, just like SCHD, has had some massive, massive growth over the past almost 20 or so years, up 217.21% and not even including dividends. Now, VIG also does pay a dividend around 2%, so it is going to be the lowest starting dividend yield out of the entire group of three, but it does have massive dividend growth of 8, 11, 9, and 8%. So just like SHD, over time, VIG has paid more and more to shareholders, which ensures that shareholders are likely to get paid more and more in the future, at least if history was to continue on like it has been. Now, VIG has a very, very strong basket of holdings, and it's very diversified, with around 318 as of current. Companies like Microsoft, Apple, ExxonMobil, United Health Group, JP Morgan, Johnson Johnson, Visa, Broadcom, Procter Gamble, and MasterCard. These are some of the biggest, strongest companies in the entire world and companies almost any investor would love to have exposure to. Now, lastly, VIG does have a 0.06% expense ratio, making it towards the way lower end of any ETFs out there because, again, it is sort of passively managed. But this ETF has a great strategy, tracks a great high-quality index, and has performed insanely well over time. So honestly, it's as simple as that. Three different high quality different ETFs that not only have grown over time, not only have consistently paid dividends over time, but have great strategies, great basket of holdings, cash flow from day one, and fair expense ratios. Maybe minus Devo a little bit. If I could go back in time when I first started investing, I would have never invested into a single stock at least not with the majority of my portfolio like I decided to do years and years ago. I instead would have built a portfolio very simple, made up of some of the highest quality dividend growth ETFs of all time. 
And then maybe if I still wanted to invest in single stocks on the side, I could do some small money and build out some smaller satellite positions. But this right here is what I call a foundation. This right here is what I call financial freedom in the future, as long as an investor is willing to stick it out and stay invested long enough. But when it comes to building your idea of a monster dividend growth portfolio, comment down below a few names that you would include into yours. And also let me know what you think of mine. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to please drop a like down below and subscribe for more future content like this. Thanks as always for stopping by. And if you are interested in investing, make sure to check out these recent videos I posted right here.